was that really numbers were just a, an aspect of language. Have you ever wondered how we invented a number to count nothing? Even more interesting, have you thought of what really happens when we think of zero? Long before calculus or binary code took over the digital world, zero was first recognized as a placeholder in ancient India. Over the years, it became a key part of math, helping us do complex calculation, generate digital codes, and realize when our bank account is empty. But why does the human brain need to represent nothing? And in what strange ways do our brains process the concept of zero? Let's find out in this video how our brain creates something from nothing by thinking about zero. In 1999, neuropsychologist Brian Butterworth made a fascinating discovery that shook up the way we think about how the brain handles numbers. One of his patients, a woman who had managed the accounts for her family's hotel, suddenly couldn't deal with numbers above four after a stroke hit the left side of her brain. What made this case so interesting was that she could still function in every other way. Her memory, reasoning, and language were perfectly fine. But when it came to numbers, they just didn't make sense to her anymore. Butterworth noticed something curious. She had no trouble recognizing symbols like traffic signs or political logos. But numbers? Those were a complete mystery to her. It raised an important question. Why were only numbers affected? At the time, prevailing theories, including those influenced by linguist Noam Chomsky, suggested that numbers were simply an extension of language. The idea was that if your brain could handle language, it would naturally handle numbers too. But here was a woman whose language skills were fully intact, yet numbers completely eluded her. It didn't add up. Butterworth's research led to a surprising conclusion. The brain treats numbers and language differently. They aren't processed in the same way, which was a big shift from what many had believed. This distinction becomes particularly intriguing when we focus on how our brains handle the number zero. On one hand, zero serves as a placeholder, making complex math much simpler. Take, for example, how it helps us tell the difference between 70 and 7,007 Without it, we'd be lost. On the other hand, it stands alone as a number that represents the absence of anything. How does our brain reconcile these dual roles of zero? Keep watching as we explore recent discoveries on the way our brain processes this revolutionary concept. But to begin, let's establish some important context. Zero is hands down one of the greatest inventions in human history, with a massive impact on our evolution, including the digital age we're living in, which is built on zeros and one AS. But here's the weird thing. Despite its significance, the history of zero is still pretty mysterious. In ancient Mesopotamia, around 2,500 years ago, Babylonian merchants etched two diagonal marks onto clay tablets, unwittingly giving birth to a revolutionary concept, the placeholder digit. This humble innovation allowed for the distinction between numbers, laying the foundation for a fundamental shift in mathematical understanding. Fast forward to India, where centuries later, zero transformed from a mere separator to a profound numerical entity. Indian mathematicians boldly assigned zero a numerical value positioning it alongside other numbers on the number line, with the first recorded instance attributed to the trailblazing Aryabhata in the 5th century AD. This groundbreaking achievement cemented Aryabhata's legacy, earning him a permanent place in the records of mathematical history. Brahmagupta Another prominent Indian mathematician around 650 AD formalized arithmetic operations using zero. He used dots under numbers to indicate zero, calling it sunya, which means empty in Sanskrit. Brahmagupta established rules for addition and subtraction involving zero, setting a foundation for mathematical operations with the number. However, he incorrectly stated that dividing any number by zero would result in zero. This rule remained unchallenged for centuries until mathematicians later proved that division by zero is undefined. 
The invention of zero was a turning point that sparked monumental advances in mathematics, science, and technology. From this concept arose modern number theory, the laws of the universe, and much of what we understand about mathematics today. As neuroscientist Andreas Nieder from the University of Tübingen in Germany put it, zero is, by many mathematicians, considered one of the greatest achievement of mankind. It took millennia for the concept of zero to be recognized as a number which underscores its complexity. Zero is uniquely challenging for the human brain. It takes children longer to grasp zero compared to other numbers, and even adults tend to process it more slowly than other small numbers. This is because zero represents an absence, which the brain has to treat as a concrete mathematical object. As Benji Barnett, a researcher studying consciousness at University College London, explains, non-zero numbers easily map onto objects we can count such as three chairs with four legs each at a table. With zero, however, the mind has to take an additional step. It must acknowledge the absence of objects and assign a numerical value to that nothingness. Recent studies have begun to explore how the human brain represents numbers, but for a long time, no one has looked specifically at zero. Two independent studies, one led by Nieder and another by Barnett, have now revealed that the brain codes for zero similarly to other numbers, placing it on a mental number line. However, zero also occupies a special status, likely because it represents a paradox. It is something and yet nothing at the same time. Zero first spread beyond India to the Arab world, where it gained further recognition. By the 13th century, Fibonacci, a traveler and mathematician, brought zero and the base 10 number system to medieval Europe after encountering it in North Africa. At first, zero was met with skepticism and confusion. Its ability to represent nothing challenged deep-seated theological and philosophical ideas. The church, in particular, resisted the concept associating it with chaos and disorder. Many theologians even regarded zero as the devil's number. Despite this initial resistance, zero eventually found its place in European society, especially in commerce and finance. By the 15th century, merchants recognized the utility of zero, and it became integral to mathematics, accounting, and business. However, its mysterious nature persisted. From a philosophical perspective, zero has always fascinated thinkers. Jean-Paul Sartre, the existentialist philosopher, once remarked that nothingness carries being in its heart, a sentiment that aligns well with the strange and paradoxical nature of zero. For researchers studying how the brain processes numbers, zero remains the most fascinating number. Nieder's research has shown that certain neurons in the brain are tuned to specific numbers, and some even respond to zero, which aligns with previous findings in animals like monkeys and crows. This discovery confirms that the human brain, too, has a specialized way of processing the idea of nothingness. So, how does the human brain process zero? Recent research sheds light on how the brain processes zero and absence, challenging previous assumptions. For decades, the focus in consciousness and perception science was on brain activity related to detecting environmental stimuli. However, this neglected the experience of absence, such as realizing your keys are missing. Initially, researchers believed absence was simply the lack of neuronal firing, but new studies, including work by Benji Barnett and Stephen Fleming at University College London, demonstrate that the brain encodes absence using unique neural patterns. Barnett's research, published in Current Biology, investigated the brain's processing of zero. Using magnetoencephalography, he and his team studied brain activity in participants performing zero-related tasks. Their findings revealed that the brain treats zero both as a digit and a quantity. Similarly to other numbers, 
exhibiting the numerical distance effect. The brain distinguishes more easily between numbers farther apart on the number line. This suggests zero is represented on the brain's neural number line. Independently, Andreas Nieder and Florian Mormon's research, also published in Current Biology, corroborated these findings. Using data from epilepsy patients with implanted brain electrodes, they observed the numerical distance effect for zero. However, their research also highlighted a crucial distinction. More neurons preferentially represent zero than any other small number. This suggests that while zero is processed similarly to other small numbers, its representation is more distinct and accurate, making it an eccentric outlier. Interestingly, they found no such distinction in how the brain processes the digit zero compared to other digits, suggesting that as a symbolic representation, it's treated like any other number. While the brain processes zero similarly to other numbers in many ways exhibiting the numerical distance effect, it also represents zero more distinctly than other small numbers due to a higher neuronal allocation. This suggests a dual nature. Zero is integrated into the numerical system, but maintains a unique neural signature reflecting its fundamental role in representing absence. The research highlights the brain's sophisticated ability to represent both the presence and absence of stimuli, with zero acting as a critical bridge between these two concepts. With more research, we will discover how the brain's representation of zero interacts with other cognitive functions, such as memory, attention, and decision-making.